Hey class, how you doing? Um, I'm making this video per the request uh, from several of you in class have asked if uh, I could do a video covering this project in Excel. And uh, I'll just go ahead and get right to it. So we're working on the uh, fifth module project in Excel. We did this one in class, but I'm going to go ahead and make this video anyways, just in case you need to reference this material. And uh, yeah, let's go ahead and get this started. So the very first thing I'm going to do is... As always, I'm just going to save this by changing the name uh, to a 2 at the end. Make sure there's no extra characters, nothing else like that. I'm going to click Save, and we're going to get ready to start here. All right, so um, I'll just read from the instructions. You can follow along if you'd like, but uh, let's begin. So Gilberto Ray is a financial analyst for Flex Wireless Communications, a telecommunication company in Sacramento, California. In addition to cell phones and wireless plants, Flexi sells electronics, accessories such as charging pads and headphones. Gilberto is in analyzing the revenue generated from the series of accessories and asks for your help in completing the analysis. Okay, so go to the an annual sales worksheet, which is right here. So I'm going to click down here. And the range B5 through B9, Gilberto wants to consolidate the sales data from quarters one through four in the previous year. And cell B5, so let's do that, cell B5. Enter a formula using the sum function and 3D references to the sales for batteries and chargers using the data on the quarter one, quarter two, quarter three, and quarter four sales worksheets. Fill the range with B6 through B9 with that formula to calculate the total annual sales for the different types of accessories. Okay, so if I want to I'll create a formula here. So I'm going to be adding across tabs. So I'm going to put my um, my insertion point right here in this this uh, this cell. But I'm actually going to come up here and I'm going to type this up as such. So I'm going to start by typing the sum and I'm going to double click it there to uh, to begin this. Now what I want to do is click on the first quarter tab and I'm going to click this and I'm going to hit enter. And I'm going to come back up to my formula and I'm going to click in here and I'm going to, you know, hit a comma here because I want to select the second quarter. So here I'm going to select quarter one, the same thing, batteries and chargers, and I'm going to hit enter. Um, and I'm going to do this, so on and so forth. So if you look here in the formula bar, I'm clicking right after B5 and doing a comma. And I'm clicking on the tab and then on the cell B4 that's or B5 that's in this sheet and I'm hitting enter and then I am clicking on this again do another comma let's go ahead and put our quarter four I could type this in directly if I knew the syntax by heart if I really wanted to I could type all of this in directly without clicking on the sheets that's very acceptable to do that uh, to do so um, so if you find yourself, you know, if you don't want to go click between sheets, you could just, you know, type this formula in. But this is what you need to pay attention to. Notice it shows the formula up here, but not down here. It shows our actual figure. So that step is done. So let's move to number two. It says um, fill the range. Oh, and actually, sorry, we, we almost skipped the step. So we need to fill this range because what we want to do is copy this formula and if you didn't see how I did that you know if you focus here on the fill handle very carefully uh, hover until you see that icon and then drag down you're going to go ahead and fill this out so there we go we have our figures and that looks good all right so step number two says Gilberto also wants to display the total accessory sales from the previous year this data is stored in another workbook and so b12 of Gilberto's workbook Enter a formula using the external reference to the cell B10 in the accessories worksheet. So sometimes we want to reference cells that are in another worksheet, and that's perfectly acceptable to do so. Just however, keep in mind, if you ever do that, you'll always need to kind of keep them together for this to work if it's going to be a live reference. Um, so here we're going to go to B12. This is where we want to go. Now, this is where we need to open up that other document that was supplied with us when we downloaded these folders. As you can see, there were support documents and here is one of them i'm going to go ahead and open this and here is our support document so where are we copying from so it says here on step two um, in cell b12 of the current workbook insert a formula using the external reference and b12 b10 from the accessories worksheet so as you can see 
Oh, actually, you can't. So as you can see here, the other one, here's B10. That's this right here. So, But before we do that, we need to come over here. And I need to start this off with an equal sign. And then I can come over to this other sheet that I have open right here. And if I come over here to B10, you can see that uh, as I select this, this populates. And if I press Enter, I am just literally referencing whatever formula is going to be on this sheet. Okay, so that step is done. That was step number um, two. Let's go to step number three. Gilberto wants to make some changes to all five worksheets, which all have the same structure. Group the annual sales quarter one, quarter two, quarter three, and quarter four worksheets. In cell F1 of the annual sales worksheet, enter a formula using the date function to display today's date. So uh, first thing you notice right here, there's a green bar underneath annual sales. And then you have these and there's no bar. Well, sometimes when we're working, we don't want to have to go and repeat steps over and over and over again on each sheet. Sometimes it's just easier to select the sheets. And I can do that by uh, holding down the control key and then left clicking each sheet if I want to. Or I can hold down the shift key and then just select the range that way. But I like to use the control key for this. Once they're all green like this, you know they're all selected. So now any change we make to this sheet will be made in every sheet. So let's take a look and so what is the formula? So in the formula in cell F1, which is right here, we're going to use the today function. So we're going to start this off by uh, typing in an equal sign, typing in today, and I'm going to double click this as it pops up. Now, notice, um, uh, no. notice that it starts a bracket. It doesn't give us um, the closing bracket. I'm going to put that in there since I'm always just going to ask it for the current date. And as soon as I put in that other parenthesis and hit enter, see that cell resizes and this is going to update to whatever the current date is. So that's it for step number three. Step number four says in the range D5 through D9 on all five worksheets, Gilberto wants to project next year's sales for each accessory. Round it up to zero decimal places so the values are easy to remember. In cell D5, Enter a formula using the roundup function that adds the sales for batteries and chargers in 2021 to the sales for the same accessory cell uh, B5 multiplied by the projected increase, um, I'm sorry, projected increase percentage cell C5. Round the result up to zero decimal places. Okay, so let's unpack this. So what we're doing is in this range right here, we want to put a predictive analysis that multiplies really this value together and then re-adds that value. And so to do so, um, I'm going to I'm gonna start with, um, actually for this one, I'm going to go to formulas and we're going to go to um, math and we're going to look for round up. All right. So round up, round up. There you are. So what is our number and what is the number of digits? So the number of digits is going to be zero and our... Um, our number is not is going to want to round it up, but we're going to actually do a, a formula in here. Um, we're going to round up. Um, we're going to round up B five times B five times um, C five. Okay, and then we're going to add the value of B5 to that amount. And I'm gonna click OK. Now, what did I just do here? So let's take a look. So I, I multiplied these two values together, B5 by C5, but then I had to add back this value so that I could see what the total sales would be with the total percentages. Notice that it's been rounded up. If, if you did this correctly, there should be zero, zero here. In terms of zero places, it rounded it up to this figure right here. Um, I did that, and then what I want to do um, is copy that formula down. So it says in cell D5, we already did that. We entered our formula, um, round the values up, fill the range D6 through D9. So I'm just going to grab my fill handle here and then drag this on through. And as you can see here, we're going to have that update, and our rounding is correct. We have our formula here, so that is good to go. 
It says, step number five, ungroup the worksheets. Use the quarter name in cell F5 the annual of the annual worksheets to fill the range G5 through I5 with the names of the remaining quarters of the year. So notice our worksheets are still grouped. Now I could come over here to home, format, and over here there's, you can see there's uh, some sheet options over here. So there's tab color and everything here for sheets, but we can also ungroup these by coming over here, just right clicking them and then ungroup sheets, just like that. They're ungrouped. Okay, so let's uh, click, we're still in annual sales. And if you notice, you know, we copied that formula over all these sheets. You see, I didn't have to do all that work over. If I go back to annual sales, what they want us to do here is use this to fill out um, the rest of our quarters. So our fill handle can also do other series other than just numbers. So we filled the series. That was step number five, what, what I just did here. If you didn't catch that, all I did was grab by the fill handle, bring this over. There we go. Um, step number six, in the first quarter of the year, Flexi Wireless sold 25 50 units of a new smart home product called Home Hub. The company, the company wants to increase the sales of the new product uh, to 3,000 units by the fourth quarter. Project the sales for two, three, and four by filling the series for the first projection range uh, with a linear trend. Okay, so in order for this to work, we want to know if we do a linear trend. Now, a linear trend means that we're going to expect the same amount of growth each quarter. So to do this, first I need to select my uh, cells here. I'm gonna come over here to the fill tool. I'm gonna look for series and we're gonna do linear and we're gonna select trend. Okay, so not a step value, this is gonna gray out and I'm gonna click okay. And as soon as I do that, you can see that this shows me the step uh, trend that would be necessary. You know, 2550, 2700, 2850, your numbers should look like this. So let's go ahead and move on to the next step. Step number seven, Gilberto also wants to know how many home hub units the company would sell if sales were increased by 2% each quarter. Project the sales for quarters two, three, and four for the second projection, range F9 through I9, based on a growth trend using 0 0.012 or point, sorry, 1.02 as the step value. So in this case, we're gonna go ahead and select our, where we wanna um, map out to in terms of our, our trend. I'm gonna come back over here to the fill handle and I'm gonna do another series. And this time I'm gonna change this, uh, the step value and we're also gonna change the growth. So we're looking, for a growth trend. If you look here in seven, it says a growth trend. So you want to select this, but then you also want to update this to be 1.02. This will make sure that we're getting 2% of that value. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And then this shows you what you would have to sell, what it would look like if you sold an extra 2% each quarter. All right, so that was step number seven. Let's go to step number eight. Step number eight says, Gilberto wants to visualize how the sales of each type of accessory contributed to the total annual sales for 2021. Create a 2D pie chart that shows how each type of accessory, range A5 through A9, contributed to the total 21 sales, 2021 sales of the range B5 through B9. Move and resize the chart so the upper left corner is in cell A14 and the lower right corner is in cell D30. Okay, so let's take a look at this. Um, first thing we need to do is select our range, right? So we find our range is over here, create a 2D pie chart on the range A5 through A9. So I'm gonna select this range right here, but now I'm gonna need to also select this range. So I could just probably do this and that would be fine because we're just taking A5 through A9 and B5 through B9 and, and there it is right there. Um, once you have that, you're gonna click on the insert tab Come over here to where this says charts. There's a little icon right here. I'm gonna click the first one for 2D Pi and it's gonna drop that right in the middle. Now, if you've got something that doesn't look like this, make sure you have your ranges selected properly. If it looks any different than this, it's probably not selected in the range properly. So I'm going to go ahead and place this here. We're going from A14 to uh, 
the bottom right lower corner on cell D30. So I'm going to drag this down to cell D30. There we go. So I have that. I'm going to click in the chart title here because our next step is to uh, make the chart more readable. So to make the 2D pie chart easier to interpret, type Accessory Sales 2021 in the chart title. Now, in order to just edit the title, notice when I click away from this, if I select this, this is where I'm at. I'm going to just start typing. I want you to see what happens here. So accessories, accessories, oops. Uh,